Okay, so unit circle. Unit circle being that lovely circle sitting over by Jace on the side of my board. And you'll notice for those of you sitting in the classroom that I went through and next to the radians, I wrote the degrees in, yes? Okay, you'll also notice on the unit circle I just handed out that where it says 30 degrees, it also says pi over six radians. Um, on the unit circle in your notes on that previous page, again, those labelings are there, okay? So, and we'll learn more about it as we go. So, a little bit of vocabulary. We've talked. Where does our unit circle start? I'm going to put this back up for a moment so I have something to point out. Where's my unit circle start? Where is my zero, so to speak? It's over here at the right. If I say 3 o'clock, does that make sense? Okay, it's at 3 o'clock. So you have to realize on the unit circle, our starting point is always 3 o'clock. Okay, that is our basis of zero. That is our, you know, that is our reference point there, so to speak. Now, when we talk about angles, okay, um, an angle has an initial side, which is your beginning side, and a terminal side, which is your ending side. So, um, in other words, generally speaking, our initial side is going to be here at zero. Our terminal side is wherever we choose it to be, okay, wherever you're told it to be, whatever your angle is. So, initial side, terminal side. This angle inside is the measurement, and again, often referred to as theta. We've talked about that before in here, right? Now, when going around this unit circle, I said we always start at the right at 3 o'clock, yes? To go in the positive direction means you are going counterclockwise. So what we typically say backwards around the clock, right? So a positive angle, so for instance, if you start zero here, when we go positive, 30, 45, 60, up here would be 90, right? Over here, this is going to be somewhere in the area of 135. But this is a positive angle when you go up and counterclockwise. And if you're looking at the unit circle, that makes sense, yes? We start at zero, which way does our unit circle count? 30, 45, 60, there's 90, we're increasing all the way around to 2 pi, correct? Okay. Now, just as an angle can go pos in the positive direction, angles can also swing in the negative direction. So if you're given an angle of a negative angle, that means instead of going up to the left counterclockwise, you actually go clockwise. Meaning, for instance, if I start right here and I say negative 90, well, negative 90 says I go down, and where's negative 90 going to put me? Right here. And so what I'm leading into is that as we look at these angles on the unit circle, every angle has more than one name. Every angle has an unlimited number of names. So what, you know... For instance, you, I say positive 90, that means I'm going to go up here, counterclockwise to positive 90. If I say negative 90, that means I'm going to go the other direction, and negative 90 puts me down here. Now, this doesn't say negative 90 on here, but guess what? This 270 degrees is equivalent to negative 90. And that's what we're going to talk about in this next section here when we talk about the vocabulary coterminal angles. Okay? Coterminal angles are those that start at the same initial side and end on the same terminal side. They simply swing around the center more than once, or they might swing around the center the opposite direction. So, as I said, you know, what I'm calling 90 degrees. There's multiple names for it. And so, for example, listed here are some examples of coterminal angles. The claim is that 90 degrees, 450 degrees, and negative 270 degrees 
all refer to the exact same angle. If I say 90, 450, or negative 270, they all refer to the exact same angle. Now, let me show you to make, help you understand. What do you visualize for 90? Okay, you guys are holding up L's, drawing L's, good. Okay, and officially, if we're going to talk about this, my zero, of course, is pointing at 3 o'clock, yes? And so a positive 90 officially looks like this L, correct? Does that make sense? Because... We always start here at zero, and so then if we go counterclockwise, that angle is a positive 90 degrees. So that's our basic 90. When you look at your unit circle, that's what's labeled as 90, right? Now, it claims that 450 degrees is the same. Okay, so think about this with me. Again, if I start here, right? If this is my zero degrees and I'm starting there, we're going to go in the positive direction. So we're going to go counterclockwise. What do you know as you go counterclockwise here? If I start right here, this is 90, right? What am I at over here? 180. And here, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what I'm drawing a little bit better. I'm just trying to show you. Okay, keep going here. What am I at right now? 270. What am I at right there? 360. Where's 450? How much more is 450? It's one more 90, isn't it? Because what is 360 plus 90? 450. So the point is, Did we end at the same place? We started at the same place. We ended at the same place. It just took us an extra lap to get there. Okay. Now, I'm also going to claim that negative 270 is the same. So negative means I go which direction? Instead of up and counterclockwise, we're going to go down and clockwise. So if I go down and clockwise here, Okay, right now I'm at negative 90. Over here I'm at negative 180. And then over here I'm at negative 270. We started at the same place, we ended at the same place. We just took different paths to get there. So do you believe me now when I say 90, 450, and negative 270 all represent the same angle? Okay. Now, the comment down here is that these angles simply differ by an integer multiple of, in the one we just did, 360 degrees. Because what do you know about a circle? 360 degrees, yes. So how you can check that these are examples of coterminal angles, take 450, subtract off 360. What do you get? 90, right? Take negative 270 and add 360. Negative 270 plus 360. What do you get? 90. So by adding or subtracting 360 or multiple 360s, these are all going to be equivalent. Okay, that's a degrees example. That's the one our brain works better in, right? Now, I have to force you to think radians at times. Okay, I have to. Radians is all new to you, right? However, it's an important part of trick. Okay, going forward, in pre-cal, we probably talk equal amount of degrees and radians. In calc, we rarely talk degrees. Okay, it's expected radians. Okay, um, once you get out of pre calc, you know it's expected radians. Okay, so pi. You have a unit circle to look at, yes? Where's pi? 180, yes? So when I say pi, 
Your brain can think 180 to correlate, but that is what type of angle? Well, you learned it back in elementary as a straight angle. Okay. A straight angle there. Now, that's pi because, okay, reminders, we've talked a little bit about the inner circle. In degrees, once around the circle is 360. What is that in radians? Once around the circle, and that's something you could write on the unit circle I gave you. It says zero and zero, but that zero is also going to be two pi. I don't have a good spot to write it there. So here we say it's zero, 360, or zero and eh, two pi. That didn't show up very well. Okay. So if two pi is all the way around the circle, what's halfway around the circle? One pi. You'll also know that each quadrant, so like to go here from zero to 90 is going from zero to pi over two, right? So you're going half a radian, or excuse me, half a pi each quadrant you go. So there is my crooked pi. So that's pi, correct? In that if we start here at zero, right, and we go over here, we end at pi. Okay, it's claiming that 3 pi is the same. Does that make sense? So if I start here, right here I'm at pi, yes. What happens when I go back to the beginning? Where am I at right there? 2 pi. Where do I go to get to 3 pi? That's the same, yes? So 1 pi, 3 pi. Keep counting. What's the next pi that's going to be the same? Five pi? Seven pi. Nine pi. Because what are we doing each time? Adding two pi, yes? Once around the circle is two pi. So each time we are adding 2 pi. Yes, Levi? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Now, we had 1 pi. We had 3 pi. We had 5 pi. We had 7 pi. 9 pi, so on and so forth, right? So all the odds, yes? Where does that mean my evens are? This is what Levi was just asking about. Where does that mean my evens are? If here is 0, once around is 2 pi. What comes after 2 pi over here? 4 pi, because you add 2 more pi, yes? Each time you go around that circle, you're adding 2 pi. Now, okay. I'm going to go back and get the negative 99 pi. What's negative mean I do? We're going to go the opposite way, right? So when I start here at 0 and I go the opposite way, where am I at right here? If I go down here, this is negative what? Well, just once around, it's negative 1 pi, Yes. Okay, if we go another lap around, what is this now? Negative 3 pi. Go another lap around, what is this? Negative 5 pi. Can we argue that this is going to be negative 99 pi eventually? Obviously, I'm not going to draw all those circles. I could, but it wouldn't be readable at all. Okay? Now, and as you notice, okay, over here, I was able to prove to you that we could add and subtract 360 each time, right? Over here, because we're working in radians, my proof is that I can add and subtract 2 pi, or multiples of 2 pi. So 1 pi plus 2 pi takes me to 
3 pi, yes? Here, if I take 1 pi and I subtract 2 pi, I'm at negative 1 pi. You keep subtracting 2 pi a bunch more times, you're going to be at negative 99 pi, because you're always going to be on the odds. Okay? Are you seeing the idea of how this works with coterminal angles? Okay, because in this next section, and I guess we talked right there that these angles simply differ by an integer multiple of either 360 or 2 pi radians. And that's because a circle either measures 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. So in example one, it is asking us to find a positive and negative angle that are coterminal with the given angle. So coterminal just meaning same angle, just a different name. Specifically asking for a positive and a negative answer. So. Well, okay, 30 is our given problem. We want a coterminal angle that is positive to 30 degrees. So what would be another name for 30 degrees? Okay. Pi over 6 is an equivalent angle. That's the radian. I want to know another name in terms of degrees, I guess I should say. <laughs> okay, sorry, I just really lost track of everything that happened between that noise. Okay, let's talk about 390. Let me pick 390 for the moment. Okay, so let me pull out the unit circle for a moment. Here is 30, yes? So I need another name for 330, or for 30, sorry, I need another name for 30 in degrees. How do you go around and get back to 30 degrees? You have to do what? One full rotation, and what is one full rotation in degrees? 360. So to get a coterminal angle, we can take 30 degrees, Add 360 degrees, and we are now at 390 degrees, 390 degrees. Now, that was going the positive direction around the circle. Could you give me more positive angles bigger than that? Add 360 to 390. That gives you another one. Add 360 again. You can keep adding 360 however many times you want, right? Now, they only ask for one positive coterminal angle. So 390. Now, I heard negative 330. How did we get negative 330? Take 30 degrees and go backwards, which means we're going to be subtracting 360. What is 30 minus 360? And that's the negative 330 degrees. In other words, if I take this unit circle, And we've got 30 here. And the idea of going backwards means I subtract 360. That puts me at negative 330. Because going from here, it would be negative 330. Because we'd be 30 away from the 360. Yes, that's all you have to do. Carly, what did you say? Yes, there are multiple right answers. No, I only wanted, because they gave me the problem in degrees, I'm only looking for degrees, okay? Pi over 6 would not be what I'd call a coterminal angle because it's this, it is 30 degrees just in radian format, okay? So I'm looking for, you know, so yes, there are unlimited angles. Now, in all honesty, what are most of you going to do? Add 360, subtract 360, and give me those. 
Go for it. Okay. Yes, Levi. But if I go, so negative 2, 10, here's, so if I start here, negative 180 is here, and then you go 30 more degrees, it would end up being right here at 150. No. Nope. You're welcome. Okay, B, negative 150 degrees. First of all, good thing to talk about. Let me pull this back up here for a moment. Where is negative 150 degrees? If I start here at zero, I go negative. That means I'm going down, yes? Where is negative 150? I'm going to stop where? I have to stop before 180. How far do I have to stop before 180? 30. So right here, negative 150 is right here. I might have just given you an answer if you think about it. I gave you a positive answer. Now, without using the unit circle, mathematically, how do we get that to 10? Negative 150 plus 360 degrees. If we take negative 150 plus 360 degrees, guess what we get? 210 degrees. Add 360 a bunch more times if you want to. All those answers are right. What's a negative coterminal angle? What do you do? Take negative 150 and subtract 360. What's negative 150 minus 360? Negative 510 degrees. Okay. What changes with C? We're talking radians. Which means they give you radians. I want your answer in radians. Hey, Castro, come to the high school office. Hey, Castro. Okay. Hoping to get this done real quick here before we run out of time. On the degree answers, what were we doing to find our negative and positive coterminals? Adding and subtracting what? 360. What is equivalent to 360 in radians? Once around the circle is 360 or 2 pi. So instead of adding and subtracting 360, and subtract 2 pi. So we're going to take 2 pi over 3. And we're going to add 2 pi. We're also going to take 2 pi over 3. And we're going to subtract 2 pi. Now, what would be helpful to know about 2 pi? 2 pi over 1. We need a common denominator of 3. 2 over 1 is what over 3? 6 over 3. So what you are adding and subtracting is 6 pi over 3. Does that make sense when I say that? So 2 pi over 3 plus 6 pi over 3 is going to give me 8 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3 is going to give me negative 4 pi over 3. And I am down to less than a minute. Bell's going to ring on me any moment. Okay. You are welcome to start looking at homework. However, I'll be honest. This is minimal of what you'll be doing in homework. But if you want to look at coterminals while it's fresh in your head, go for it. Uh, tomorrow I will pick up in the notes. Your homework, if you want to listen, is page 347. 1 through 7, 9 through 11, and 17 through 20. Okay. So. Even that would be a lot, though. Okay, guys, have a good day.